Hi, dear judges and all the teachers who are sitting down there. I'm really happy to stand here to share with you about my lesson plan. So let's begin right now. Um, through watching this video course, first I'm going to share about my basic understanding of it. So let's start. Okay, this video course, the title is called Eco-Friendly Home, and it has divided into two parts. The first part comes from the Cohen's home, and the second part comes from the Levin's home. So in Cohen's home, he lives in the suburb of USA, and he has three bedrooms. And the problem with his bedrooms are he costs a lot of energy in the houses and in the buildings. And then the expert comes into the scene, whose name is Emery, and he said he wanted us, he wanted the people to save energy. So he visited the uh, Cohen's house and he found out some problems. For example, the heater in the room has some problem. The freezer in the kitchen, actually they don't need to use so many electricities. So the expert has come up with simple ways to save the energy. For example, you should unplug electronics when you are not using them or when you're not using the TV, you, should. you shouldn't plug in. Instead, you should plug off. Uh, and then, uh, to make a comparison, the video course moves on to another person's house. His name is Levens, and Levin lives in Colorado in the mountain area. And his house is actually very eco-friendly. Why? Because by using the electricity, the electricity usually comes from the solar panels. And he has given up several examples. Actually, the weather there is minus 40 degrees Celsius. However, his house keeps warm always because of the solar panel. Okay, so through comparing with these two examples, the two people's homes, the author or the video course tried to tell us we should use the eco-friendly home. And then I'm moving on to my teaching procedures. Uh, first, I would do the leading or warm-up activity. If it is that possible, if I am uh, teaching a small classroom, I probably will divide students into bus groups or let them sit in the horseshoe uh, sitting because that will create an intimate atmosphere. Then, for the leading part, first I will show them some pictures. Those pictures are describing people are wasting uh, electronics. Uh, so, by looking at all these pictures, I would like my students to discuss that first, and then they may come up with a conclusion that, okay, right now, by looking at the pictures, people are wasting energy. So, I'm moving on to the next part, which is the listening part. First, I will let them listen once and answer several questions about just listening. For example, I will ask them whose home is more eco-friendly? And then I will ask them like where does Cohen's home locate and where does uh, Levin live? So like these kind of questions to uh, do the general understanding. And after the listening, I will let them listen twice to listen to the problems. But before listening twice, I have some words to explain. For example, heater and freezer, because we don't usually use this kind of domestic appliances in China. So I would like to explain these words first and probably elicit more words like refrigerator or oven, etc., like those domestic appliances. Then I will play the video clip and let them fill in the blanks. The blanks could be like heater, freezer, electricity, energy, unplug, electronics, and 60,000. Uh, 60, now, $60, like the number, those are the blanks. Then, after checking the answers, I would like to uh, explain the words like unplug or plug in. Also, I would like to compare two sets of words, electricity with electronics, because they probably think those words are similar to each other, but they might don't know what's the exact difference between these two words. So here, I might do some explanation. So with the problems, then come to the next part of Cohen's home, 
these are the solutions. But before I let them watch the video clip, I'll let them to discuss in pairs or in groups to think about what are the solutions they can provide due to the problems they've heard. And after several minutes, I'm going to elicit some answers from my students and probably conclude the solutions. And then I will let them watch the next part of the video clip and see what is the solution or what are the solutions provided by the expert in the video course. So they might come up with the solutions. And so this part is done about Cohen's home. Then we are going to move on to Levin's home. First, I still uh, would ask them one question before they watch the video clip is that why Levin's home is more eco-friendly. So I'm going to do two uh, Due to the different levels of the students, I'm going to set up two sets of questions. The first one is just ask them, why is his home more eco-friendly? The second one is, if the students' level are a little bit weaker, I'm going to give them the multiple choices. Why? A, because they use solar power. B, because they use wind power. C, because they use natural gas. And D, probably they use the water power to decrease the difficulty. Um, of the task. Then I'm going to play the video clip of the second part in Levin's home. And then they will probably come, with, come up with the answer that is the solar power. I'm going to do some explanations. And move on. I'll let them to listen to the next part about Levin's home. This time, still fill in the blanks. But fill in the blanks. What are the blanks? Let's see. They could be solar panels and 40 degree and 120 watts, okay? So after filling the blanks, I'm thinking probably they couldn't fill up the blank like panel, but I could explain to them, but I'm pretty confident that they can fill in the numbers. So after uh, these two parts, uh, I think we have finished the different tests about listening and then I probably will do a conclusion part and try to ask them, okay, can you tell me after listening, uh, what's the structure of this video course? Probably they say they've divided into two parts and they each part follows the structure of problem and solution. And then talking about my language uh, focus, first, I would like to talk about pronunciation. Still, there are words like heater, water, power, and solar. I still want them to notice that there is a huge difference in American accents and in British accents. So I would still talk about roticity and non-roticity in pronouncing the words. And then talking about problem and solution structure, I would provide them more expressions to express how can you say the problem, how can you say the solution, because definitely we need some linking phrases or words. For example, when you are trying to raise up a question, you can say owing to, since, as a, uh, or solution, as a result, consequently, or as a consequence. Then for the speaking activity, I will set up a semi-controlled activity. I will let them retell the stories, retell the video course by using the problem solution structure and using all the phrases I've just provided them. Then the third point is important. It's because how to make the statement reasonable and rational, you have to use figures and statistics because in the flanks, uh, blanks, we have filled in several numbers. So I will let my students notice that. And in the last part, I will give them an assignment. I would like my student to launch a campaign to do some propaganda. Probably they can make some posters and questionnaires to interview some random students in our campus, ask them sort of question, and they should make a presentation or report. The title is called How to Build an, an Eco-Friendly Campus and three requirements for them to finish their report or rep presentation. First, they have to use the problem solution structure. Second, they have to do some researches to use the statistics to de describe the problems. And third, they have to try to use the phrases and the words we've learned in that video course. 
So this is my basic understanding, and this is my lesson plan. Time is really limited, but uh, I have already tried my best. Thank you so much. Good morning. Morning. Okay. Um, we know that the uh, the material, uh, the overall structure of this uh, is um, follows the the problem solution pattern. Okay. Yes. Now, within the solution part, how are the materials organized? So, can you find any patterns of organization? Uh, you may rely on the text or you know, what is said there, the verbal part, or yes. you may rely on the visual part. You yes. can recall what you can remember from what you saw in the video or what you heard from the video yeah. and, and see how the materials are organized. So I have to explain you, can why... You, can you find any pattern there? Uh, the patterns? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, I, I didn't find a lot of patterns, but I found out some phrases for students' use because I'm going to teach them several words and the phrases, but for... Are these, are these phrases... Um, f do, do they fall into the domain of, say, discourse connectors? Uh, I, I think so. And also, I've provided them some expressions to say the solution and problem structure, the problem solution structure, because I think in this video course, uh, they follow this structure, but they didn't provide the students or provide the listeners very clear linking words or linking phrases. But actually, when students are trying to make a report or make a presentation, they have to use some linking words to make their presentation clear. So I've provided them some expressions. And in this video course, I've only selected some of the words and phrases that I think are important. And it's quite important to let them notice the structure. Yeah, notice the structure. I mean, the whole their, structure. their own structure or the, uh, the structure of the, of the video program? Um, the structure, the whole structure of this video program, and I've also provided them the other expressions to explain the structure. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank um, you. Right. Um, in the teaching design, you um, mentioned that you wanted to use multiple choice question format. Yeah. Yes. If the students found the material too difficult. Okay. Yes. Can you explain why? Why, you know, for, for, the, for, the, for the lower level students, multiple choice question format may make things easier for them? Uh, because they, ha they can see the words, because one of the choice got to be right. So when they're trying to listen, they just need to catch the main words in the choice of A, B, C, or D. But if I don't provide them any choices, I just let them listen. They have to notice the word or notice the expression by themselves. So I think multiple choices are easier compared with other types of tasks compared with, for example, true or false? Uh, not true or false. Compare with, for example, I'm just ask him, why is his home very eco-friendly? Compare with this type of questions, because I'm giving them the domain of the words to choose, so that when they're listening, they only need to catch the main words or the main phrases they've heard from the video clip, instead of write or catch the words by themselves. So I think multiple choices are easier. But do you think the distractors might really distract them? Sorry? Do you think the distractors in the multiple choice questions may really distract them? Uh, I don't think so, because in this part, we're talking about different types of energy. And in this video course, it only mentioned the solar power. But actually, we still have so many types of eco-friendly energies. For example, the wind power, the natural gas, the water power. So I think I can provide them with more choices of different types of energies, so that they might use this types of energies in their follow assignment or in their presentation. Actually, I could broaden, broaden their horizon and develop their critical thinking this way. Thank you. Thank you very much.